everyone sadhu namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas pena pindupam rupa sadhu 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 dear friends in the dhamma um as i just mentioned this is our weekly meeting of our mindfulness group um for those who are practicing or those who don't understand my mother tongue so we meet on every tuesday um in the evening and have a practice session and then we have a talk and a question and answer session and um, why we have a talk and question and answer session is because when we practice uh, the blessed one has mentioned that your practice should be supported by five factors as i have been mentioning in the past the five factors are the morality and then listening and then the discussion and then um concentration and insight so this time we are taking for the second and the third which is listening supportive factor where uh, i will be talking and the listeners will be sleeping that is the listening supportive factor it's the uh, um the preacher and the audience um will be listening and in the discussion it is different the communication is two way both the audience as well as um the uh, preacher will be talking so it is more energizing when it comes to the discussion but from the both these two factors um the practice is supported the blessed one says you will be able to know uh, mainly new things that support your practice and you may be able to clarify your doubts you may be able to uh, confirm your experiences you may be able to straighten your views and you may be able to uh, have some um, rapture by listening to a talk of the B- buddha so um, this is why we have this talk sessions and the discussion sessions after the practice one might think if we practice isn't that enough it is definitely not enough because uh, we are going from this known um, stage known uh things to the unknown area right so known breath and the known walking in fact uh when we observe it we haven't seen breath as well we haven't seen walking as well we have been just breathing and we we were not aware what has been happening there. and we were just walking and we were not aware what has been happening there. but um when we start paying attention to those things um uh, then only you understand that we we have been aware only very little about these general things we have which we have been doing on a daily basis but um irrespective of that um, when you pay attention to those things the purpose of paying attention is not to see the breath or not to see the uh, walking as such the blessed one is trying to take us to the ultimate realization ultimate happiness ultimate goal of a human being right so for that only uh, to support that we are uh, having this discussion and the talk and the discussion and talk will show you will um, let you understand 
um, how you go from known to unknown. So uh, with that brief introduction of why we have a talk session, I would like to um, mention the meaning of the particular verse I just recited. The verse I recited was Pena Pindu Pang Rupa, right? Uh, the meaning of is form, which means physicality, um, is like a lump of poem, if I pronounce it right. F O A M. Yes, right? So it's two funny words in English. Form is like poem. <laughs> so you will have to say form, form. <laughs> So instead of saying form, form, I'm saying form. In other words, physicality is like a form, right? Form means mm, um, it, it, it has been very, uh, very nice um, um, situation when the blessed one was uh, living uh, in uh, Ayodhya. It's, it's one of the cities in uh, India uh, near the bank of the river Ganges, um, he has seen uh, on the river, uh, you know, when water is running, especially when muddy, muddy water is running, uh, on the edge, um, this form will be formed, right? There will have lump of, you know, white uh, bubbles like thing, and they will be formed, and blessed one has seen that. And uh, after seeing the blessed one, he called the bhikkhus or he showed the bhikkhus and um, he is telling the bhikkhus like this. He says, bhikkhus, suppose that this, suppose that this river, Ganges was carrying along a great lump of form, a man with good um, sight would inspect it, ponder it, carefully investigate it. And it would appear to him to be void, hollow, insubstantial. And for what substance could there be in a lump of form? So this is, uh, this is the question Blessed One is asking. If you see a lump of form that is created on the, uh, by the edge of the river, what is there? Is there anything that you can touch, that you can take, that is substantial in that? And if you very clearly, I mean, when you look at it, it looks, you know, very, very aesthetic. And you feel looking at it. But if you, if, if one with a good eyesight gets closer and see it, he may be thinking, what the heck it is? There is no, nothing to be taken from that. And then he doesn't stop there. He says, so too because whatever kind of form there is, um, whether in the past, future or present, internal or external, gross or subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, because Bhikkhu inspected, ponders it and carefully investigated and it would appear to him to be void, hollow, insubstantial. For what substance would there be in form, in this case, F-O-R-M, right? So he's showing a lump of form in the river and telling your body is also like that. Uh, body is also physicality and uh, physical process and it is also like that. So when we um, hear this, uh, by hearing, uh, you may get some understanding of it. And if you... Um, intellectually, rationally uh, think about it, then you can argue to yourself and understand intellectually, yes, there is nothing. But this insubstantiality or the voidness or what's the other word, hollowness, is not talking intellectually. It's not just uh, saying, uh, hearing from somebody else. He is saying it after seeing it for himself, right? So he's uh, teaching us, uh, uh, give, after giving this suggestion, uh, he says, he asked the big bhikkhus, bhikkhus, 
you inspect it carefully, you ponder it carefully, and you will see your own physicality has the same same uh, nature. And that is what we are trying to do. And that is what we are trying to understand. But do we see that? From the current uh, mindset, from the current mentality we have, um, how are we going to get there? Uh, is Buddha talking some sense? Or is it nonsense? Is what we are doing here. It is an experiment we do. We are trying to see whether we can we can agree with the blessed one. Right? So, therefore, the first thing uh, we need to understand is that uh, the form, F-O-R-M, means in Pali, Rupa. Right? So we call it Rupa. In, in, in uh, the Pali verse I uh, chanted, it says, Pena Pindupang Rupa. Pena means the form, F O A M. And Pinda means the lump. And that lump is like Rupa, means form. Right. So, what is form? Uh, the meaning of form, it says, Rupatiti rupam. Rupatiti means um, something that keeps uh, jumping up and down, uh, that keeps uh, appearing and disappearing, that keeps um, changing all the time. And something like that is called rupa, rupatiti rupam. And if you, when you take in that sense, now when we heard the word, when we hear the word form, uh, naturally our attention goes to our body, hopefully, right? Because our body is a physical process. So in the phys physical process, we think, yes, this is form and that is not wrong. But so far as the blessed one is concerned, he tells uh, that is not the only thing which can be considered as form. He says, yes, this is form and it is very important. He also says, anything that you see is also form. So when he says, Rupatiti Rupa, when he says, um, form is form, which means not only our body, a, a whatever we see is also having the same nature. And he doesn't stop there. He says, Anything that you hear is also a form. He says that is sound form. And visuals are form form. And he says whatever you taste is also a form. There is some physicality in that. That is why you uh, have it. So they, he calls it um, taste form. And similarly um, the smell, order. It is also um, smell form or order form, right? And whenever you have tactile sensation, touch, and when you feel it, that is also uh, tactile form, right? Contact form, right? So all these are, for him, are forms. So it's 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 not um, it's not a very narrow meaning as such. Anything where there is a physical process is form for him, right? So that is the uh, scope of the discussion. That is what he's trying to uh, say are form. So when we uh, put it that way, uh, what is the relevance of that to us? No, when, when we say the relevance of form for us, is um, uh, it is um, it is yes it is in one way our physical process is form and on the other hand all what we involve in engage with are also form so in other words the entire uh, entire world for us, so far as we know, 
is form, right? So therefore, um, it has a huge relevance to us, huge practical relevance to us, right? So when we bring our attention to the uh, the uh, walking process, we are bringing our attention to the lower part of the body. So therefore, it is the form that we are trying to understand, that we are trying to observe, that we are trying to experiment. And when we bring our attention to the upper body, the um, inhalation and exhalation, again, we are experimenting the form. And when we are walking, if you see something that is again form, when you step on the sand or on the ground or on the carpet, whatever, again, the form is in touch with form. So it's a huge spectrum. In other words, um, to some extent, it is the world. To some extent, not 100%. It is the world. Our world comprises I and whatever I can see. Uh, sound and whatever um, the ear and whatever the uh, ear can hear. Similarly, the other, other sense objects. And our world is restricted to that. We have not seen something. If you have not heard something, if you have not tasted something, or if you will not have in the in the future, then that does not constitute your world. So, in other words, to some extent, this rupa is world is our mm, life, and although it is Buddha says in this manner, when we when we uh, take the way we live, we don't consider our body as a lump of foam. We consider that it is so precious and it has to be protected as much as possible. And nobody should touch my physical process. Right? So therefore, it's a huge addiction uh, from the birth to the death to look after form, right? Say, for example, um, <clears throat> uh, if we take just the way we live, when we wake up in the morning, we uh, immediately look at ourselves if the mirror is available. Look at ourselves from the mirror and you understand what it is. And then you rush to the toilet, um, wash your mouth, wash your face, brush your teeth, and comb your hair, and do all sorts of things to make it, to, 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 uh, uh, to beautify it, and make it attractive. And then if any garbage is already stocked in your system, throw them out, right? Solids and liquids. And then uh, um, that is also form. Right, which we have been keeping in us. Right? And then, um, again, you take form to keep you going. You will be fueled by form. You will eat and drink, and uh, that, that helps us. Right? And we are taking all sorts of precautions. You can see me now. I'm wrapped with all sorts of things. My ears are covered. My body is covered with blankets and all that. This is just to protect the form, right? And we keep the air condition on or the heater on um, just to protect the form. But whereas the Buddha is saying, it is void, it is hollow, and it is insubstantial. We don't feel so. We are taking all this trouble to keep it protected, right? So where are we going? I see telling the same thing is the experiment. That we are, uh, that we are trying to um, understand. Um, we go to the extent when we say uh, talking about the form. We take a health insurance, try to protect the form, irrespective of the value of health insurance. You are going to fall sick, but our mind is so corrupted that we think by taking health insurance, everything will be all right. And our mind is so corrupted that 
by taking uh, what do you call life insurance, our death is looked after. And, and, and the business world is uh, using our this addicted mentality to form to earn money. All right, so um, one of my friend, I was telling him something. I exactly don't remember the conversation. Um, uh, I told him we should not be scared of sickness so much. Then he told me, you can tell like that because you have health insurance. He did not know that I don't have health insurance. So I didn't want to tell him as well. So that's the mentality we have in the world. If you are living, they must have a health insurance. And the system has been designed in such a way that it is compulsory. And, 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 and similarly, and it's so funny, we have something called funeral insurance as well. Right, it's it's you know people think that this is a financial aspect of the thing, but what are we trying to protect? Um, won't you die just because you have life insurance? Um, won't you fall sick just because you have health insurance? Right, so because we are so addicted to our form, people are just making money out of it, and uh, that simply shows where we are. And it is because um, all our systems are geared to do that. When you go to um, at home, we will be teaching our kids the same thing. Look after this, look after that. And, uh, and it is, I'm not saying that we should not do it. And there are instances, there are things that we cannot avoid. And to some extent, we will have to look after it. But where is the limit is the question. So um, our all, all the system in the education, uh, in, in schools, they will to teach only about form. They will never talk about anything beyond physicality. And only a Buddha person like Buddha uh, has spoken about something about something beyond physicality. So during industrial revolution, what they did was the science Science was developing in the world so fast. And they said anything to do with um, things which is not matter, they gave it to the church. And they are myths. You look after that side. Uh, mental side is yours. And you look after that. And uh, we will be looking after the science side. Science can look after only matter. Whereas... In, the, uh, in our existence, majority or the main, main role is played by not the physical process, but the mental process. Mental process was completely ignored and thrown into the dustbin and put into the garbage dump and it has been burned. Now only they realize the mistake they have done. And now they are going for meditation. Now they are going for mindfulness. Now they are going for vipassana, doing all sorts of research. Um, now the bus is gone. Bus is gone long ago. Now they start research. So uh, anyway, now coming back to our addiction to the form, our education system is 100% from the primary school to the PhD and even beyond. It's only physical process. And they are just trying to touch the mental processes now. They are no way near the blessed world. And there is no need to talk about the politicians. They will be saying, we will be giving um, all the possible uh, health um, facilities. We will be giving all the possible securities. For what? Just to look after your body. Nothing else. All the protect things we have. And our mm, economists are the worst category. And they, tell, they will be telling you, take as much as loan you want and invest that and get bankrupt. They, they don't say get bankrupt. They will say that you will be able to do this, you will be able to do that, you will be able to do that. But they will be taking lump of it and ultimately the person doing it, doing will get bankrupt. So 
they are trying to um, create uh, an environment where the matter is the most. And what happens is, end of the day, now we can see people are talking about global warming. People are talking about no rain. People are talking about weather changes. People are talking about air pollution. Where have they come from? We never looked after the form the way we want to look after. We went behind as much money as possible. And we never thought about lives. We never thought about human beings. We never thought about other living beings. And we have lost our own world just because we went behind the form um, like crazy monkeys. And uh, to protect all that, uh, if someone is going against those things and they're antisocial, the legal system is made to protect those corrupt systems. And uh, unfortunately, very unfortunately, our spiritual systems are also doing the same thing. I'm not talking about other religions. In the temples, when they go to temple, they go and beg things. They worship the blessed, blessed one and wishing for things. Whereas the blessed one himself says, this form is void, this form is hollow, this form is insubstantial. But they go and ask, uh, may I get through this exam? May I be able to have this? May I be able to do this? May I, in all sorts of wishes. And they, they um, you know, tie some uh, white string on your hand. You think everything is done and dusted. And to that extent, um, our spiritual system is also corrupt uh, and going against the very teaching that they should protect. And it is worse in Buddhist countries. It is worse in Buddhist countries. And they, they believe that Buddha has come to give us things, whereas he's telling something else. And without telling what, without seeing, without hearing what he's telling, without practicing what he's telling, and they are simply going behind Buddha and ask, give me this, give me that. And this is where our mm, addiction to form, not only personal and even as a society, is. So um, it has gone to the extent that when we measure how rich we are, we see the amount in the bank and see how big your land is, see how big your um, house is, see how valuable your car is. And you will be taking, uh, they will be considering all fixed and current assets um, and uh, try to see your wealth, which is again form. And sometimes when you when you call, when you say the amount in the bank, it is not even form. Right? But when you see a land or a house, you know, you can say it's form. And the amount in the bank is something that is made up. And they say it is linked to some amount of gold. See whether you can get that amount of gold from the bank anytime you want? No. It is um, that way. Um, our wealth is measured from form. And not only our wealth, even in a community, even in a country, it is GDP, gross domestic production. Production is the form. And so as a society, we have uh, we are going in the wrong direction. What Buddha has said, holo. What Buddha has said, void. What Buddha has said, uh, insubstantial, is what we are holding on our shoulders. So, um, in, in it is going to the extent uh, that we are um, we are indulged in it. We are bogged down in it to so much. When we uh, when we see some sort of a form, uh, seeing is not enough. Say, for example, you are going to buy a car. Uh, you go and see the car. But seeing is not enough. Right? 
you will have to uh, satisfy the other faculties as well. You will ask them to start the car and see how the engine is, engine sound is. You will see how the exhaust sound is. You will see whether there are any other sound. So just the seeing won't do and it will go to the next stage of uh, listening. And not only that, seeing and listening is not enough. Can you go for a test drive? You go for a test drive as well. And that is also not enough. Then you will um, ask, can I show this to the mechanic? And you show it to the mechanic as well. And then that is also not enough. Then you will uh, finally buy it. And after buying it, you will be loving it uh, as if you are loving your girlfriend. Or maybe sometimes more. You will be very um, intimately linked to it. So I've just taken an example of a car. Just imagine if your attention goes, if if you are a male, if your attention goes to a female, if you are a female, if your attention goes to a male, will you just stop with seeing? No. It just want to go to the next stage of having a chat. How are you? And then it starts from there. <laughs> starts from there. And then it wants, um, it says, uh, seeing is called dasana. And see, uh, hearing is called savana. And then it goes to the next stage of samullepan, which means um, not just um, seeing and hearing. Hold hands and going to the beach and going to parks and things like that happen. And then it won't stop there. Get together and all the couples, all the boys and girls and go and dance and all that. Samullepana means when you go to that stage, um, you see, you hear, you touch and everything else is happening together and not just as one. And then together and finally it's called Sansakta. Sansakta means you get involved very uh, intimately. Right? So this is where the form is taking us. And that is the world we live in. So uh, one can very reasonably ask the question, is Buddha right? When you look at the world, you have billions and billions of examples to say that Buddha is wrong. If it is void, if it is hollow, if it is insubstantial, why people are doing this so much? And it is going to the extent to protect your things, you kill others. You kill others mercilessly. You kill others without thinking even for a second. Right? That is just to protect uh, your form or to grab their form. And that is um, when those things are happening, Buddha is no one to the world. But there was a great scientist. Um, and that scientist name is Rohitasa. And he has seen this. He has seen this mess we are in. And he has, uh, what he has done was, uh, now the Karande scientists, they have a lab. They have all sorts of other gadgets. They put things in the beaker or, or, or in the tube. And they either uh, put it in the fridge or they heat it up and do, they do all sorts of things. You guys be knowing much better than me. And then they do experiments. They do experiments uh, by using a lab or by using tools. But this particular scientist is the only one. He has not done that way. He has gone himself to see. What he has done is he has, he, he has been a, such a powerful mentally developed person. He can walk so fast. He can step from uh, the east to the west coast, not in Australia, of the world, right? So fast in a fraction of a uh, blink. And then with that speed, he has been walking in the universe, in the galaxies. And he has been walking for 100 years. And then uh, why he has done that is to see 
whether there is a place where this form is permanent. Where, to see whether there is a place where there is no death, where there is no sickness, which means this form is not hollow. This form is not void. This form is not insubstantial. There is something solid in it in somewhere in the universe. He has walked himself to find. But the current day researchers are also trying to do that. I know there are, there are some bodies um, preserved in America. The one name I remember is Henry Ford. Right? He's preserving the body, thinking that one day we can give them life. That's, that's the mentality. Um, so this Rohit has also done the same thing to see that there is a place where there is no death. And he has kept walking, walking, walking up. He has walked for 100 years and died while walking. And then in the next birth, when the Buddha was there, he comes and asks the blessed one, um, do you believe that there is a place where there is no death, where there is no sickness, anywhere in the universe? The blessed one says, sorry, um, you don't find a place like that. And then the blessed one gives another answer, which confuses him. The other answer the best blessed one gives is that. He says, um, you can't find the place by walking the universe. And then he says, without walking the universe also, you can't find the, find the place where there is no death. Then he goes really upset. Because the two answers are contradictory. One, he says, you can't walk and find, and then say, without walking, you can't find as well. Then he tells uh, the, 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 uh, what the universe is. He says, the universe is this fathom long body. In this body, there is no particle that is not available in the universe. Any particle that is available in the universe is available in this body. So therefore, if you want to find a place where there is no death, where there is no sickness, you uh, experiment this. You go into this universe and see. When, then you will realize over time that, um, that there is a place, there is no sickness, there is no death. Right? Okay, so that is what we are doing. That is the suggestion of the blessed one. Uh, that is the experiment that the blessed one is asking us to do. That is what we do by walking and by sitting. We go through in this universe. We observe the lower part of the body, part of the universe, and observe the upper part of the body. And to do that, um, the, the, what we are doing is we call, this is mindfulness. And, uh, and uh, there is a huge relationship between mindfulness and the form. The relationship between mindfulness and the form is, if I may try to remind you what mindfulness is, um, mindfulness is the choiceless awareness. Choiceless awareness is mindfulness. There is nothing else. Meaning of mindfulness is awareness or awakening. Choiceless awareness, choiceless mere attention, non-judgmental attention. Those are the terms that you can use uh, to explain mindfulness. And is that all? Don't you have awareness now? All of us are having awareness, but it is not the awareness that the blessed one is talking. The awareness what we have is awareness about the way we live in the society. We can have, we can, we can go to work and do our job without any problem and come back. And we can, um, we can look after a family without any problem. And we can, um, uh, we can drive a vehicle on the road without any problem. So we have some awareness. But that awareness is different to the awareness that the blessed one is talking about. The awareness that the blessed one is talking about is the awareness of the inner space. We have the awareness of the outer space. Our attention is extrovert. 
Blessed one says, bring the attention introvert. So if, when you go attention extrovert, there is no limit. That is why uh, he said, uh, Rohita sir, you can't walk and find a place in the universe. But if you come inward, introvert, inner space rather than outer space, then you can, you know, you know the place, you know the scope within which you will have to work. So, uh, again, uh, when you come inside, there are three main factors that are important to come, uh, to become introvert. The three main factors to become introvert are, it should be yourself. And it should be right here. It should be right now. So these are the three things that you will have to maintain your choiceless awareness. You will have to be aware of these three things. If you are aware of these three things, then you are mindful and your attention is inward. And the question is, it is here now I am. Question is, who is I am? Who is I am? Without telling any details in your driving license or without telling any details in your identity card or the pass passport, who am I? It's a billion dollar question for everybody. Right? And we think I am is always the body, the physical process. And we don't give a damn about the mental process. There's an interconnection between the two. So then there is no when we don't talk about the mental process, there is no talking about the interconnection. There is no point talking about the interconnection. So therefore, the blessed one very well knew that we are looking after our physical process only, our form only. Therefore, he said, although there is a mental process, although there is an interconnection, you don't know what it is. You, you have no clue whether it's head or tail. So you start, you, you assume I am means the physical process. I am means the body. That is why when we are mindful, when we are trying to be mindful, we bring our attention to the body. We bring our attention to walking. We bring our attention to the breathing or the upper body or the sitting posture. Right? Because that is where we are. That is what we consider as I am at the moment, although it is not so, right? So we'll have to start the journey from where you are, not from when you are, when you are in Brisbane. You can't start the journey in, from Sydney, right? A lot of people from Brisbane, they are imagining going from Sydney and mess up the whole thing or from Melbourne. The person who is in Brisbane and if he knows that I am here and this is how I should go from here, job is very easy. So therefore the blessed one says, you are considering in, in practice that your form is you. So consider I am as form, I am as your body. So therefore it has a huge relevance to us in the practice of mindfulness. To practice or to 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 um, experiment this um, what do you call uh, physical process, the form. Uh, blessed one has given fourteen techniques. Fourteen techniques in the uh, four foundations of mindfulness. The first one is, as we know, anapanasati, or uh, observing your respiration. And the second one is observing your postures. Uh, observing when you are sitting, you observe your sitting posture. When you are standing, you observe your standing posture. When you are sleeping, you are observing your sleeping posture. When you are walking, you are observing your walking posture. So what happens there, your attention still will be with the body will be with the form, will be with the physical process. And then the next one is um, clear comprehension, which means 
He's not just taking the postures. He's subdividing the postures. He's saying, have your attention when you turn your head to the left or right. Have your attention when you raise the hand. Raising a hand is changing the posture, right? And like that, he says, have your attention to the body no matter what you do. In each and every movement of your body, you have your attention. So he is going to the extent to say, have your attention to the body even when you urinate and defecate. Right? So that is the compassion of the blessed one. He's not leaving anything out in, uh, in, in observing the body. And also he's giving another thing. Uh, if possible, try to see the uh, basic elements of your physical process. The basic elements of the physical process are uh, the uh, earth element, air element, water element, and fire element. I'm not going to go into detail of that. I'm just signposting the techniques that the blessed one has given. So these four techniques I just mentioned, if I may repeat, observation of the respiration, uh, observation of the postures, observation of the semi-postures, uh, or, or, or the sub-postures, and observation of the element. These four observations are practical, are experienceable. Right? You don't want any imagination to do that. It is possible. Right? Uh, when you are walking, if you feel hardness, that is element. Uh, when you are, this is winter, when you are sitting or walking, if you are feeling uh, coldness, that is element. And uh, when you are breathing, if you feel uh, that your body is tipping uh, down or that your body is falling down, then um, it, is, um, it is element. And like that, um, they will have, you will be able to experience this. And there are other 10 techniques which are not experiential. The other 10 techniques which are not experienceable are First one is the foulness of the body. There are 32 parts in our body. These 32 parts are, um, are decaying parts, are things that nobody would like. It starts from uh, head hair. Um, yeah. We call it um, Loma, Naka, Danta uh, and all that. Head hair, body hair, nail, teeth, urine, and yes, everything, there are 32 parts um, that uh, of the body, and we reflect on them, and then say that these are um, these are useless, and these are decaying parts, these are um, the um, foul parts of the body. And that, of course, is not something experienceable so far as I am concerned. You can't experience it, but you will have to imagine. You will have to imagine that my um, head there is foul. It's a foul part of the body. So on and so forth. And some, 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 some things are, of course, yucky. But hair is definitely not. For me, it's not a problem. And for three of us, it's not a problem because we don't have hair. So, and for Alex, it is different because he has hair. So he doesn't consider that it has, um, it is a um, whole part of the body. He's doing nice hair style and all that and keeping, keeping uh, the hair nice. So like that and consider about a girl and they have hair cut, different hair cut every month. Oh, you look completely different. You look gorgeous and all sorts of things. Um, you, you may have heard in offices and because they don't consider that hair is a foul part of the body and therefore it is not something directly experienced. It is something that you will have to imagine. And similarly, the other nine uh, things, other nine things are also uh, our, when, when we die, our body decays in nine stages. 
and the blessed one has recommended use imagine those nine stages and think that these nine stages are going to happen to me as well so that is also a way that you can bring your attention to the form but it is not something experiential right so therefore although there are recommendations of the buddha um since they are not experienceable and due to other limitations that we have uh, on those techniques i'm not going to talk about them right but i just want to mention you uh, if you have read you may have read these things as ways that you will be able to mind that you can bring mindfulness to the body using them yes that is true um the main things the, that we can use is the other four techniques by using the other four techniques breathing postures semi postures or or, or the clear comprehension uh, chapter uh, and the elements uh, we definitely can uh used to experiment our physical process and uh, either accept or reject the hypothesis of the buddha that's his hypothesis and we are trying to either accept or reject to do that these are these are the experiments we are going to do and these are the techniques we have so um um that is why we are doing uh, mainly uh, even when we practice we are using mindful walking we are using mindful sitting and we uh, recommend whatever you do on your own when you do things when you eat you usually eat alone right when you defecate and urinate you don't do it in groups you do it alone when you take a bath when you take a shower you do it alone so when you do those things on your own um you can be mindful of those activities as well so it is not only just walking and sitting uh we try to be mindful other day to day activities as well using these these three techniques not just one day not just one week not just one month it may be the lifetime we try to um see whether the buddha is right or wrong and if someone is continuing the practice after the first or the second day or after the um first two weeks then that person is seeing something in the practice he doesn't see that it is void he doesn't see that it is um, hollow he doesn't see that it is insubstantial but he sees there is something in this and he continues to do the experiment and in this experiment uh, when, since i use the word experiment uh, it is uh, there is a very important um, important thing that you will have to keep in mind which is we know when we do usually experiments in our schools they say um i don't remember the terms of course the english terms they say um what do you call it parikshana nirikshana nigamana which means experiment uh, observation and the conclusion yeah they say th there are three columns when we are small in the science uh, class um they say this is the experiment and these are your observations these are your conclusion you let write there are three columns that is at school but buddha's experiment we don't have the last column buddha is never asking us to conclude on anything keep observing keep observing keep observing keep observing if you keep observing without coming into conclusion without coming into judgment without taking a decision then you may be able to find a place where the body is hollow where the physical process is hollow where whether this is similar to a lump of form right so to do that and now we have started this and we have been doing this particular 
uh, group for about now seven years, eight years. And I have been practicing for about 25 years. And my teacher has been practicing for 45 years. So um, we have seen something that the blessed one is, has not told things. Just, a, just for the sake of saying, 2,600 years ago, it was true. 2,600 years after we practice, even when the Buddha is not there, we also see that, that there is something, uh, something, um, some meaning in what he said. So, um, I'm not going to talk any details of the techniques from here and how we see that hollowness, hollowness and um, avoidness and insubstantially today. Um, hope this talk give you some meaning, some idea, some encouragement to do the practice that we are doing to see whether the form is really void or hollow or um, insubstantial. Um, thank you for listening. And we will continue from there in the next session and see by using these techniques that we are doing, whether we will be able to accept or reject Buddha's hypothesis. Blessings of the Noble Triple Gem to all of you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. With that, um, we will be able to uh, take the discussion session. Uh, if anyone is having any questions, um, any report, any comment, any suggestion, now is the time for that. Yeah, you will have to turn that on. Yeah, I've got yeah. something to add just to um, your discussion, Bonte. A couple of things I've actually noticed myself, um, just when you were going through, you know, the sense faculties and, um, you know, like our feces and hair and nails and teeth and obviously everyone likes to decorate them and things and try to make them look pretty, but one day it all just fades anyway. Um, <clears throat> one thing I noticed was obviously being a chef, I tend to singe my hairs quite often. Um, if anyone ever smells when you singe your own hair, it pretty much sums up that it's a disgusting thing. Like it's, it's not really a pleasant, you know, not really a pleasant smell. So, it, you know, holding on to these things that are eventually going to go gray and fade and, dissipate and disappear is just kind of meaningless really um so yeah i've noticed that just in day-to-day -day life with meditation and then adapting that to the things um i actually watched a thing with ajahn Chah, <clears throat> or maybe i've read it um and he was saying you know about his teeth and he went to the dentist and asked rip them all out because it's just there's no point and he was saying about you know, hair, nails, feces, <clears throat> spittle, and the Lord Buddha talks about it. It's We attach to these things, which are just absolutely pointless. Once you stop attaching to them, you can move on to other new things and find out more things. So, yeah, I appreciate that talk. It was actually really good. So, Tara wants to know. So, in song there, I will... Um, add a bit more to that. So I'm, I'm not very, I'm not a good fan of this foulness of the body uh, to start with. The reason is not that it is uh, wrong or not that it is uh, false, not that it is bad. The reason is if we if we too much concentrate on the foulness of the body, we generate hatred as well on the other hand. This is why I'm uh, even my teacher, uh, are more concerned about the experiential side of the form. It is experience and there is no need for us to imagine and in a subtle way generate hatred. But um, what Buddha says and what you said is 100% correct. And if I give two more examples to that, my teacher used to say, once you remove your um, tooth, ask that person 
to put it back in the mouth. <laughs> Whether they, it's your own, your own uh, tooth, which was there all the time in your own mouth. But if, if you ask again to put it back in your mouth, see how much of hatred you will have to, towards that person who is saying it. And Goinkaji says, uh, when when a young couple is there, and um, <coughs> husband husband maybe um, you know uh, what's the word? I, I don't get the right word. Uh, husband maybe um, you know um, touching the hair of the girl <coughs> and says so beautiful. It is like so, like this, like that, and so much of admiration. And then, and then one day he says, when he was cooking uh, dal curry, one of these hair has fallen into the curry. And then he says, um, the thing that he appreciated so much, he will throw that on the face of the woman. Don't you know how to cook? You are putting hair in this. And instead, he suggests, if it was so beautiful, you take the whole bunch of grass and eat it. <laughs> Why you hate it? So we are, we are having one mentality and we are suppressing that mentality. And we always see ugly thing as beautiful and beautiful thing as ugly. So it's, it's a coveted and perverted mentality we have. Yeah. All right. Any question? Yeah, there's there's a question here. I'll get that question. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that this is um like question question, but um, it's just um from my experience. Um, yeah. Firstly, um, I came to. This temple, like um, in quite a long time. I think um, I've I've came back like in a month time. Yeah. Um. During the um during the last four months. Um. Yeah, what I've noticed was um, laziness. Um. Like. What's the word? Yeah, by um, like not coming to temple regularly. Um. It affects my like meditation progress, and it also reflects in. Um, my daily basis in terms of um my um life performance and stuff and no uh, yes um uh, has uh, it does um like in a sense of um it motivates me to meditate like um regularly um not to miss and by coming to temple more often it tells me that um i need to be at temple and which i promised myself um and it also what i've noticed was it reflects in my lifestyle um um by more by temp by going by attending to temple more often um Oh uh, yes. You see a different vibration uh, when you come to the temple. Uh, you see a different vibration when you come to the temple. Uh, the um, we we are usually living in vibrations. Yes. We are getting sucked into vibration. So if we don't come to a spiritual place or place where there is subtle and positive vibration, we will be in negative vibrations all the time. And we enjoy negative vibration. And by coming to the temple that you will get is uh, another type of vibration which recharges you, which takes away your negative, negative vibration. So that is why even if you feel lazy and even if you want to stay at home, right? you have seen the two alternatives that you have. Yeah. 
and therefore there is some appreciation within you but we can't exactly say what it is so therefore we are taking what buddha says as form is hollow and void and all that at face value and when we do the experiment we see something in here i i remember um after intro introducing walking practice to steve and after about a couple of days he came and said that i'm scared to go to office i asked why okay. no yeah i mean to his work uh i asked why you know i feel that when i work also i will be a zombie like this so it gives a different different vibration to us it gives a different um, revelation of ourselves it gives a different behavior to ourselves and that behavior is so conducive so positive for our own well being which we have neglected left right center for eons in time but each and every human being is able to tap that so since you have that uh, in in your system only although you are lazy although you are you are at home your one side of your mind is saying go to the temple yeah. and that's a better place good thank you and thanks for continuing and i i, I see your walking and sitting is also good but you never provide a report so you should uh, uh, try and try and form a report of your walking and sitting okay. yes right. give give a report what observations you make in your walking what observations you make in your sitting that is very important to further your practice to advance your practice practicing is fine but you will have to tell what observations you have and what sort of questions about the practice you have then only uh, a teacher will be able to help so one day um yeah that being just said um one day when i was meditating um yep and i've noticed um i can't dream myself like being shot in guns right and um i somehow i felt the pain of it i guess and um and the and how scary it is so that moment um I also like woke woke up from the meditation. Yes, and the reason I'm I'm talking about this is because um you just um said about like um after our death um our our death our body is going to be dissolved into the nature. Yep, and I can't I kind of think it kind of cor correlates. Yes. Right. Um, uh, when I say provide a report, and that's that's definitely an experience. Uh, when I say provide a report, what we expect is now we are doing the practice of walking and sitting, right? Then you will have to say I'm going to talk about sitting. So if you are talking about sitting. and we will have to say when i sit this is what i am observing whether you are observing sitting posture or whether you are observing your respiration and then you will have to talk about that that's the report whether you uh, observe it in the tummy or in the chest or at the entrance of the nostril and how you feel your in breath how you feel your out breath and when you keep on observing in breath and out breath what happens to that and how you feel the beginning of the in breath how you feel the middle of the in breath how you feel the end of the in breath similarly the out breath and there are billions and billions of information when you observe your breath and why after talking this why talking this or while while doing this observation only you see that dream so now instead of giving only that dream you will have to relate it to your practice does it make sense no okay. now you you had this thought or the dream uh, when you are doing your meditation 
which is the sitting practice. So when you do, as soon as you start, um, did you um, did you dream that someone is shooting you and someone? No. no. Um, after some time, yeah. it happens after some time. Yeah. So before that incident, what happened? Were you observing your breath? Yes, yeah. So you will have to tell that I was observing my breath, and these are my observations. You will have to tell your observations. If you are observing your breath, you get information of the observation. When you do an experiment, right? You have experiment collar, you have observation collar. So you should give your observations when you observe your breath. Right? And then at some point in this observation, you observe this dream-like situation as well. Then you provide that. Then it makes sense to the report. Otherwise, you have completely ignored the main observation. This is a trick of the mind. Why I'm telling you is, this is the trick of the mind. Mind doesn't want to take anything which is neutral. Observing breath is neutral. You don't, you, you can't, um, there is no point in observing breath. That is what the mind thinks. But seeing this movie-like thing is very attractive. So mind is trying to take your attention there and ignore neutrality, right? So uh, I will be able to see if you give the observations of your neutral, neutral uh, object that you have been observing, at what point your mind is trying to trick you? Yeah, after some point, I, I know. I mean, it's not necessary to give now. In future, when you give your report, you will have to give like that. Do, do you understand what I'm, what I'm telling you? Yeah, so those uh, observations of the breath is very important. Then we are talking about observation of I am. The other thing is a hallucination. It's a daydreaming. And it is trying to justify that our body decays after death and all that. It has got nothing to do with the experience. But the experience is with the breath. And mind is trying to um, take that away because it is, it is reducing your craving. It is reducing your hatred. What is reducing your craving and hatred? Observing the breath. Mind wants to have craving. Mind wants to have hatred. So it's talking about that daydreaming situation. Okay, so good that you mentioned. So in this way, you will it open up. Then I'll be able to help to show how our mind is trying to trick us. Make sense? Yes. Good. Anything else? Anybody else? One thing, I don't have much to add today, but... Uh... That, that's the point I'm observing right now. It's like uh, when I do meditation, I bring my attention, to, for example, walking, I bring my attention to my feet and then I observe like uh, when it goes up, goes down and hit and where it hits and like how the weight distributes and uh, then it's expand to like, you know, the movement of body, like how do you, you feel that you are basically uh, moving side to side and at some point, that's the most trickiest one, when you have that whole feeling, uh, probably that neutrality is too boring and then start thinking process like that. Um, I won't to trace where where that starts to happen. Like, uh, it's very subtle. That's my aim. Like, I don't know, I'm just uh, maybe to focus on it, like should not focus or should not put too much attention to it because that's why maybe I can't grab it. Because I feel like coming back to the meditation when the thought process goes out and coming back, is easy to capture like i know what's the process like maybe i change the direction maybe some difference in uh, flow like 
went from a uh, warm area to a uh, cold area. That's where my mind comes back to meditation. It's um, relatively easy to understand my thought process when it comes back to meditation, but going away is always tricky, very tricky, very subtle. Maybe I might too much focus on that. That's, that's, that's the um, thing I'm doing last week, and I didn't do meditation today because I have something to attend, and uh, but that's my report. Yeah. You are talking about the walking, and in that report, um, and your mind is suggesting um, that this is what you should do, but there is a subtle, subtle uh, trick of the mind even there. Now you are observing uh, whatever that you feel. Uh, in the foot and the walking process is observed very well and you keep keep observing without involving too much or if at all not any involvement right so and uh, once this happens uh, it gets bored right so it gets bored means your liking has dropped drastically your disliking has dropped drastically and um, then the mm, uh, boredom or the sleepiness or, or misery sort of mentality um, pops up. What have you got to do then is simply to be aware and observe that. Instead, this our stupid cunning mind is suggesting you to do something intentional. Mind is trying to bring intention in that subtle point. And, and also, uh, it is justified from our own uh, comments. We ask people to see the beginning of it. And since you have heard it, mind is trying to use that to make you do something intentional. So what you will have to do is, uh, not that, yes, I am bored. Simply accept that and keep on going. That's all what you will have to do. Then this intentional involvement, the volitional involvement that the mind is trying to inject into us can be further sidelined. So it's, it's, it's in the right direction. So in this manner, uh, you will have to report. By reporting, we can pick those subtle points and then uh, corner the mind as much as possible. Good job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's where I think uh, I'm heading. Yeah, I I, I feel that because uh, it's this search process keep me motivated, and I know that motivation means uh, brain. That's the brain's happy spot. <laughs> what the blessed, blessed one is trying to do is to drop our motivation to the rock bottom. We have motivations to conquer the entire universe. But he's asking, can you just keep quiet and conquer yourself? It is so boring. It is so boring. And if we do that, it is much more, uh, much more superior than conquering the universe. So our mind is trying level best to motivate, motivate us to do things. And it is not our fault. This is how we have been conditioned for so many lifetimes. So many lifetimes. We are, we are doers. We want to do things all the time. And the mind is using all right. So, any other questions in Zoom? So, I'll answer. Um, I would just like to provide a report. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I went on a retreat like last week, and um, just before that, I think it was like throughout the retreat, um, I started finding during my walking meditation. <clears throat> sorry, during my walking meditation. I finally started seeing my steps. 
so the rises and the falls um and from there i i started feeling like my body i was like starting to go into my body like further down so like more like sinking towards the bottom of my body yeah um and then and then i finally started seeing the rising and the falling of, of the feet so when i was going up i started like so you know when you like lift up the feet you feel that balance going up and then going down mm -hmm. um so different kind of sensations um and like so, someone once said once how someone reported it was like riding a bicycle at times yeah um yeah i started feeling that as well so things i didn't used to notice like when i was starting the practice mm -hmm. um and I think halfway through the retreat, um, I think I start. Uh, I think Swami once uh, said once there was like three faculties: the the mindfulness, the um, no wait, the awareness, the faith, uh, the faith faculty, and the wisdom faculty. Mm. Um, I started feeling that faith faculty um, coming up my coming from the bottom of my feet. It was just like starting to come up. Mm. Um, and I will stop yeah, you there. Yeah. I'll stop you there. Yeah. Uh, there are five faculties, number one. Uh, yeah. Number two, faith, uh, it's, uh, if you feel that faith faculty is coming uh, from, the, uh, from the leg, yeah. it is no longer faith. Okay. I mean, I mean, faith is something that you have not experienced. Yeah, and, and faith is something that you can't uh, uh, can't come in the practice. So it is it is a sort of um, mind game. Mind is trying to say that what you experience is faith faculty, so that mind can move you away from that real experience. Mm. We will let it be like innocent children like toddlers and say exactly what our experience is, not what our mind is saying. Mind is trying to show us as we are big people, we are superior people, we are super people and we feel this and that. All nonsense. That's the trick of the mind. It's not personal, personal thing. That is how vulgar our minds are. Mm -hmm. So therefore when you, when you, when you, uh, when you listen to talk, uh, we should not apply them in our practice. Our practice is completely beyond listening and intellectualization. Yeah. It is hundred percent experience as it is. Yeah. So, like, what Swami yeah. means is like, what it means is like based on our own experience, kind of thing. Yeah, it is. You may have experienced something while walking, and yeah. you simply understand that. Yeah. Don't so, attribute it to faith. Yeah. I think I used to be like very scared of the practice. Um, and that's when Swami once was like, um, try to try to approach it with like a daredevil attitude. Um, and I don't know, like I finally started finding that. So um I literally like last week, um, until then there were times my during my seated meditation, my legs would start cramping up. So my muscles would start getting stiff, and sometimes I would have to like um, change my postures like and it will be like some kind of like old defilement defilement trying to come up and it was like very scary at the time so i used to be very scared of it and um that's yeah. when uh, I, i'll stop you there yeah don't say defilements yeah it is again your experience you, yeah. you feel it is stiff in the you stiff, feel yeah. it is cramping is good you feel it is burning is good because that is your experience Mm. But don't label it as defilement. As a defilement. It, may, oh, okay. it is defilement and it may be defilement. Yeah. But yeah. our mind is jumping the gun. Mm. Mind is jumping the gun and trying to say, oh, you have realized now you are all good. Yeah. Will, we will have to ask, we will have to keep the mind's mouth shut. Oh, okay. Okay. So, oh, okay. So, so, uh, so therefore, knowledge must not get mixed up. With the experience, yeah. then the experience, it is very yeah. easy walk, walk yeah. on the practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We mm -hmm. are when we, okay. when we get new knowledge, um, we we get hooked up with it, 
and we get attracted to it and we we go along with it and and that's mm. a bit of a danger and that is yeah. why we have the discussion so when we yeah, have yeah, this yeah. discussion we can catch those um mm. stupid suggestions of the mind so just like drop it straight away and just like carry on yeah i just yeah. observe as it observe. is yeah, just yeah. carry on if, if mm. it will say this is faith mm. and you just observe that and also go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, just have a laugh at it. Yeah, yeah, and all these like um the, all these things I used to say about like this super being stuff, um yeah. they're finally starting to like fall apart. No, this so, is this is where it is coming from, and that is why I stopped you there, and that mentality is has deteriorated now and has taken another U turn, another diversion this side. Uh, does it make sense? Yeah, kind of. So, so, so this is this is the benefit of one person uh, um, taking the reports. Mm. So we know the history. Since I know the yeah. history, I know where, where it is coming from. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's weird because you, like you, you are more mindful of that. Yeah. Because you are more mindful of that. Now it's yeah, yeah. trying to give that superiority from somewhere else. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, it's. I think I. I know I'm trying to like pinpoint about stuff. Um, like yeah. the the whole the whole rising and the falling like of the feet, like you know, like when I like I was I was like really happy when I found it at the retreat because like yeah. the the rising and the the um rising and passing away of nature of things like I never knew of that like. It's yeah. it's not. I, I wouldn't say that I never didn't never knew of it, but like, I was like I I never had like a no. proper like yeah. It's hard to explain. The rising, the rising and falling, the rising and falling you are talking about is lifting the foot and then placing the foot. Is it? And then place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the passing away of nature of things. Yeah, and, and yeah. That, it's and that is the very that is the very gross layer of rising and falling. Mm. And again, the mind is. You may have heard rising and falling during during the retreat in one of the talk or Q&A session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind is, mind is trying to plug that to the practice. Okay. And the ri rising and falling that the Buddha is talking, that, that Bhante is talking, uh, is uh, very subtle. Hmm. And you will get there. And of course, of course, you have mentioned those things in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you go to the body, in the body, you will have these experiences. Mm -hmm. So here, the, it is a mind suggestion again. Yeah. Okay. And you should make these mistakes. Or yeah. then only the mind, we can catch the mind. Yeah. So like, it, is, it's good. To yeah. It, so is that how like, uh, like, yeah, like I, I keep doing it um the the wisdom faculty yeah so um the way mind works like um the the way it operates is the mind needs to realize it made that mistake in order for it to turn that around right is that how no, the I mean, wisdom operates no i mean um again don't try to intellectualize it yeah you will have wisdom when you are completely out of this thing mm. Until such time, it is not wisdom, it is knowledge. It's knowledge. Okay, okay. Yeah. As much as you drop your knowledge, mm -hmm. you will be reaching wisdom. Yeah. And wisdom is not something that we can will it because we don't have wisdom. Mm -hmm. And and we are going to wisdom, wisdom area. And and your your practice is sharp enough to get there, but don't get hooked on to these things. You simply, uh, simply, uh, simply stay with the experience. Stay with the first hand experience, raw experience, mm. and mm. say it from your simple, normal words. Don't use any word in the in the Dhamma, any word that you hear from talks. Oh, okay. Because that is a conditioning. That is a conditioning of your experience. Yeah. Mm. I just want to hear, you know, when, when small kids burn their fingers, they yeah. don't know what the heck it is, and they come and say, Daya Pucci. 
<laughs> then then that's that's an experience and there yeah. is nothing to eat in that so that way we let us you know you said i feel it, i was feeling cramp and i was feeling this and that that's an experience mm. yeah that is how we should uh, we should give our reports and that is um, that is why we should take our attention to the body and uh, don't relate any any experience that is in the body to any of these words yeah well done okay thank you so much sir thank you so i'm happy that you participated in that retreat oh, thank you everyone sir and i thank you sir anybody else or can we go to the conclusion yeah it looks like there is no more comments or questions so we can go to the conclusion to go to the conclusion uh, we will ask uh, uh, tanuka this time or we can we can say here as well tanuka oh, yeah. will you be able, when you be able to transfer merits and we have done a lot of we have done one and a half hours practice and almost similar time uh, of um, talking and discussion about this and we have generated tremendous amount of positive energies these positive energies can be shared with the rest of the beings in the universe for that we will yeah. chant these stanzas and over to you tanuka yeah may all the us share this merit which we have thus accumulated for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness and prosperity. <clears throat> May all other beings share this merit, which we have thus accumulated, for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness and prosperity. May all the beings share this merit, which we have thus accumulated, for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness and prosperity. May all beings inhabiting space and earth, there was in Nagas of mighty power, having shared this merit, long protect the dispensation. May all beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, having shared this merit, long protect the teaching. May all beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, having shared this merit, long protect me and others. If by deed, speech, or thought, heedlessly have done any wrong, forgive, O Master, O Victor, greatly wise. If by deed, speech, or thought, heedless you have done any wrong, forgive all Dhamma to be seen here and now, timeless. If by deed, speech, or thought, heedlessly I have done any wrong, forgive all Sangha, practiced well, then comparable. Let this merit accrue to our departed relatives, and may they be happy. Let this merit accrue to our departed relatives, and may they be happy. Let this merit accrue to our departed relatives, and may they be happy. By the grace of this merit that I have acquired, may I never follow the foolish, but only the wise up to the time I attain Nibbana. By the grace of this merit that I have acquired, <clears throat> may I never follow the foolish, but only the wise up to the time I attain Nibbana. By the grace of this merit that I have acquired, may I never follow the foolish, but only the wise up to the time I attain Nibbana. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. sadhu. Thank you everybody for joining. And we will be meeting again, hopefully, next Tuesday. Yeah. Blessings of the Triple Gem. Everyone, Saranai. Everyone, Saranai.